Here at EDC, we have been very fortunate to get our hands on both the M30T from DJI and the newly released Autel Evo Max 4T, two similar drones from two companies competing right at the top. Both are incredible pieces of UAV tech, but which one should you get? And what should you know about them before making a decision? I'm Jack from Edinburgh Drone Company, and let's get into this comparison. So today we are gonna go through all the specs side by side, then discuss the size difference, how both drones perform with a few side by side comparisons, go for the smart controllers, then finally touch on the price before a final conclusion. If there is something specific you're looking for, please use the bookmarks provided. But for now, let's crack on with the video. So to save us some time, here is a complete spec sheet here, pitting these two Goliaths of the drone world up against each other. Now join me in dissecting all the details bit by bit. Okay, starting with the physical aircrafts, you can see the big difference in dimensions and weight off the bat. So if a smaller drone is important to you, then these are big differences in the table. They have the same or similar max angle tilt, horizontal speed, wind resistance, flight time, but at the IP rating is where we see the first big win for the M30T. For those who may not know, the IP code, standing for Ingress Protection Rating, consists of the letters IP followed by two digits, where the first number represents how it tests against solid objects entering the frame, such as dust and sand. The second digit relates to how it protects itself from liquid, so when it starts to rain during your flight, and a lot of the time the angle of the rain depends on the number. So with the Max 4T, I would maybe leave it out in some light drizzle for a couple of minutes, which I have done, but with the M30T, I've seen it being left out in heavy snow and rain, and it was absolutely fine. One thing to remember is to always dry the drone straight away with a towel or a cloth. Leaving water on it could damage the drone badly. So moving on to the payloads, firstly looking at the zoom camera, we can see that the M30T has a 4K zoom with a much longer focal length. However, the Autel Max 4T does have an 8K sensor. I wouldn't take this too literally, don't get me wrong, the zoom lens is amazing, but bear in mind it is a smaller sensor despite the fact it's 8K. Think of it like your phone being able to shoot 4K, but it's not going to be the same quality as a 4K DSLR. That's a slightly extreme example, but should get you thinking in a similar vein. Finally, you can see they have the same aperture capabilities, but the M30T has a much higher ISO capability, so it's going to provide crisper and less grainy footage in low light situations. Coming on to the wide camera, you can see the Max 4T has more megapixels than the M30T for when it comes to photos, as well as a lower aperture and a higher ISO of a whopping 64,000. It also includes an extremely impressive night mode. So I would say that the Max 4T definitely wins it in the wide angle lens battle. In terms of the respective thermal or infrared cameras, the M30T has a wider focal length, lower aperture and something called infrared imager super resolution, allowing for a 1280 by 1024 resolution. On paper, it is certainly better, but the truth is the difference in the actual images is very minimal but with thermal images, it could make all the difference. We'll find out later. Finally, the laser rangefinders are the exact same pretty much, and I suspect it's very similar technology, but they both do what it says on the tin, and that's the main thing. 1200 meters is a pretty impressive max. Right, that's enough of the boring spec sheet. Let's get onto some physical comparisons and delve into how these drones perform in the field. Okay, so we've got the drones out in the field here. We can do some quick size comparisons so you can see them side by side here. And um, we'll show them side by side unfolded. Um, I'll show you some of the differences in the props, quite a big difference in the size of props between these two crafts. Um, the payloads, and obviously you can see the difference within the payloads of the size of the sensors. And I'll do one where it's just on top of the M30T and you can see that. Um, without further ado, let's get the drones in the air and delve into the sensors within the payload. Ok, 
Okay, so time for some side-by-side -side comparisons with the DJI M30T always being on the left and the Autel Max 4T on the right and we're just seeing the wide angles lenses here and you can see the Autel is looking a little brighter and a bit more colourful. Moving on to the zoom lenses, zooming in on the Hopeton Monument here from our office, um, you can see that the M30T is zooming in a bit quicker but I'm just using the scroll wheel for the Autel um, and it's a bit blurry with the M30T but I'd say overall a little more crisp in some ways. And um, We'll just zoom in on something a little closer here, this is a couple of hundred meters away from where we are. Both drones are at the same height, all um, are at the same auto settings um, and you can see it's pretty similar once you're getting beyond uh, optical um, and into digital zooming you can see there's going to be a loss of quality with both of the drones there but pretty similar results. Moving on to the AI and tracking you can see the incredible AI system on the Autel here it's going to tell you all the vehicles people and boats and you can see how many it's able to pick up with the M30 not picking up a lot there um, so definite win for the Autel there. Moving on to the actual tracking we're going to try and track the same vehicles here didn't quite get it right but it's going along the same road so the results are the same like I said both drones at the same height of 390 feet or so um, and the M30T we haven't touched any of the zoom functions on either drones here it just naturally zooms into that much uh, closer um, frame whereas the Autel Max 4T likes to sort of keep it a bit more wide um, but both uh, systems working really well here the first sort of obstacle of the trees is coming up and um, both are going to deal with it quite well um, as you can see as it's getting further away and also going behind the trees it's getting more difficult the M30T does well to sort of keep tracking it but then as the quality of the zoom goes a bit and it's too zoomed in it's losing that tracking in terms of the Autel it does actually manage to pick up another vehicle which is quite impressive although it's not the right one and it takes it beyond um, the M30T's capabilities in this certain situation and um, even beyond that roundabout uh, but it's going to slowly lose it as it goes behind this final set of trees here. Um, I think it works well with the way the M30T punches in straight away but maybe suits the Autel more that it stays a bit more wider. So the laser rangefinder both were sort of doing their best at just below 1200 meters um, or in feet as the M30T was set to but the M30T did get to about 4,400 something feet so just about over 1,300 meters uh, so pretty impressive probably a win for the M30T there. Moving on to the thermal lenses um, as you can see the M30T's lens is a bit wider and I'm just showing it in black hot and now white hot here so for a bit of comparison and then finally we'll move to iron bow and see how these thermal cameras hold up as we slowly zoom in and for me I think the Autel wins this it's just you can see a bit more quality and um, you can make the two people obviously us two that are operating the drones out a lot better than the M30T and um, it's not as blurry so a definite one on the thermal lens there despite what it said on paper. The two smart controllers from these competing companies are complete contrasts in style and function. The DJI RC Plus is all about buttons and being able to do all the functions for you. This is the first controller I've seen with so many buttons, probably since the unique H520e, but we won't go into that. The idea is that you can use it when wearing gloves, whether it be because of the cold conditions or PPE in a construction setting. Whereas the Autel Smart Controller version 3 is pretty much a tablet built into a controller where it all relies on the touch screen for any specific controls of the craft and settings you may need. I think both work well and it's sort of mainly personal preference. Perhaps if we delve into a few stats that might help you decipher the differences between the two. So the M30T controller has a 7 inch screen with a resolution of 1920 by 1200 and a max brightness of 1200 nits. The Max 4T controller has a larger screen at 7.9 inches, a crisper resolution at 2048 by 1536 and a brighter screen at 2000 nits. So it wins the screen battle but as I said this controller is all about the touchscreen within it. 
How does it do when compared with battery life? So the M30T has up to six hour battery life, including an external battery attached on the back of the controller. It has a two hour charging time. In contrast, the Max 4T controller has up to four and a half hours battery life when the brightness is at around 50% and also has a two hour charge time. So something to consider is that if it's a bright day and you need to turn the brightness up, then your battery life is going to drop. I've also found it can take a while to fully charge and if you were doing a full day's work, you would probably need some sort of portable charger to keep the controller running. Also one other thing is I've found screen recording can be slightly hit or miss and can often stop randomly and there isn't sort of an indication on screen whether you're recording so that would definitely be something I'd like to see in updates. Overall I would say that I just about prefer the M30T controller as it just lasts longer battery wise and when it's cold here in Scotland as it often is, it's great having the option to wear warm thick gloves and still be able to operate the drone and all the specifics within it. Price wise, right now, as of the release of this video, is like this. The Autel Evo Max 4T with a fly more kit comes in at around the £8,000 mark. That comes with three batteries, so an overall max flight time of just over two hours. To buy the M30T worry free combo with a total of three sets of batteries to get an equivalent flight time will cost you £11,178. So it really depends on your budget and also what you might have preferred the look of in this comparison. One element to keep in mind is that you only need to buy one battery at £300 for the Max 4T, however the M30T obviously needs two batteries with a total cost of £600 for the pair. So depending on how many you want, this is something to keep in mind. I personally right now think the prices are fair for the quality of product you're getting. The M30T has come down a bit as it's been out for pretty much over a year now, whereas the Max 4T is a very recent release so I can't imagine the price coming down for a good while. Okay, conclusion time and where to begin. I've said a few times and I'll say it again, it's great to see some competition in the drone industry and these two represent the peak of enterprise drones from both their respective companies. If you need the best of the best in size or weight or budget isn't a factor, then the DJI M30T just edges it. However, if you need a high quality but compact solution, then the Autel Max 4T will serve its purpose and more. If you're looking for mapping solutions, then you would probably want to consider the Autel Max. The payload is interchangeable and we are bringing out videos on the new 4N Night payload if that's something you're interested in and there is also a mapping payload coming out soon. So it's multi-purpose and it's meant to be very easy to change what camera you want on the craft. So that is a major factor to definitely consider. The M30T can carry out mapping missions but it's not necessarily designed for it so the mapping results are not of the quality that most businesses may need them to be. Both UAVs have the option of accessories with inputs at the top near the front of the craft, such as the highly popular CZI LP12 light and speaker combo that most mountain rescue teams we work with often purchase with their M30T. The truth is the latest tech is intertwined within both of these drones and it's down to you and your needs for what you choose. We just hope that this head-to-head -head video helps you to make the final decision. If you have any specific questions on these two drones, please just ask away in the comments and we will try our best to answer them. Also, as always, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one.